seasons are pretty good. <laughs> I'm going on a trip. We're going to Shackleford Banks. We're going to get on a water taxi and we're going to go over to the island where the horses are, the wild horses down by Beaufort. Is that how you say it? Beaufort? Beaufort. Any hoosie. We're going to go do that and I'm going to bring my bluefish rig and some shrimp. <laughs> we'll see what we can catch. So today we're going to look at what I can catch in Shackleford Banks with my bluefish rig. And I'm going to show you how I made the bluefish rig and I'll show you how good or not so good it is at catching bluefish. All right, let's go to Shackleford Banks. Take the pretzels with me. All right, so to start with, I had to get in the truck and we had to drive to Beaufort, uh, my mother-in-law's house, which was about three hours away from Oak Island. And we were gonna take the water taxi out, so you can see those there. You get on the water taxi, you gotta pay a couple of bucks, and they basically taxi you out to Shackleford Banks. So when they get there, there's Shackleford Banks, they drop you off at the sandbar. And I was like, okay, I'm not sure where I'm gonna fish once I get here, so I've never fished there. I've been there before, but I've never fished Shackleford Banks, so this is the first time I actually took some fishing gear with me. So I just walked down, and I found this jetty, or at least these rocks that were sticking out, I'm assuming it was a jetty, and there were some people fishing on the other side, so I was like, let me stick my sand spikes in here and see if I can't just catch something. You know, fish-like structure, there was a lot of bait around the jetty, so I thought this was a good place to go. Now, I didn't bring a bucket, which is kind of funny, so I was able to catch the cast net and catch some bait, and then I could put the bait on the hooks but then I had to throw the rest of the bait back because I didn't have a bucket so uh, I put them on my hooks this right here is my bluefish rig which I'm going to show you how to make later in this video and I basically put one in the nose and one in the tail on this rig and then I also had a double drop rig on the other rod um, so I put it on there which is kind of funny because you're going to see I'm going to catch some fish on the double drop even though I made the bluefish rig which I'm going to show you how to make in this video so I got the fish on there. I threw the rest of the mullet back. I was like, well, I can catch more. There seems to be some bait in the, in the surf. And I just cast it out and sat there and, you know, wait like you're supposed to do. There's the jetty. You can see where I'm fishing at. There were some boats out there fishing. So I thought this has got to be a good spot. And it was a good spot. It was only a couple of minutes later. I had something on the double drop rig. Embarrassing. Um, but, you know, it was fun. I was like, that's probably bluefish. I'm reeling him in. He felt nice and heavy. And when I got him in, he wasn't a bluefish. It was actually a redfish. Uh, actually a puppy drum right so but beautiful uh, the chartreuse tail like the greenish blue uh, you can't see in this video it really doesn't doesn't do it justice but it was beautiful but he was a little guy I wasn't gonna keep the fish anyway because like I said we're staying at my mother-in-law's we're gonna go out for dinner that night and then I'm coming back home so I let him go uh, released him I, I didn't measure him I don't know how, how big what size he was I had to throw the cast net again because like I said I didn't bring a bucket but like I said not a problem a lot of bait there a lot of bait on the island here on Oak Island anyway so wherever you go you probably can catch some bait which is great and I cast that out again and I got bit off so probably bluefish probably with some bluefish there and of course that's my bluefish rig I got bit off on cast it out the other rod and I got another fish now this is kind of comical because I have not caught this species of fish in the last month when I had an opportunity to keep them. And this is actually October 3rd, I think it's October 3rd, this day that I'm out here. So um, I caught a flounder and I'm like, I don't even have to measure him. I know I'm not gonna keep him. He probably wasn't big enough. He looked kind of small. He's probably about 13 inches. He might've been 14, but like I said, I wasn't keeping him anyway. And I can't keep him because you know it's October. So he's going back in the ocean. Bye bye, Mr. Flounder. Thanks for not letting me catch any of your buddies until today uh, kind of typical so i decided to walk down to the beach there's the ocean down that end uh, it goes out towards the ocean i was up more on the sound side i was like let me just set up here and see what i can catch now there are horses on the island and these people were working walking their horse <laughs> okay it's a great dane i just had to get a video of it because it was kind of funny at this point i decided just to throw some frozen shrimp i had my brother-in-law had gotten me some bait because i couldn't catch any of the cast net so i threw out the frozen bait and i started catching pompano Earlier in the week, I had been on Oak Island doing the same thing and having the same results. A lot of pompano in the surf, but they're all small, like this little guy here. I wasn't catching anything really big, but just that, you know, they're there. You can catch them. They're kind of fun. Um, and so I caught a couple of those, and then I threw some more shrimp, and I caught this next one. And these guys hit pretty hard. You know, this is a good fighting fish, which is kind of comical when you actually get it up and you look at it. It's a pinfish which unless you want them for bait, they're pretty useless, but they, they really fight hard, they're pretty strong. So let me show you the rig I made for the bluefish. 
All right, I want to talk about the rig I use for bluefish. I'm going to show you how I make it. You can buy a store boat rig, that's fine. They even have steel leader ones, but once you have this um, stuff, this equipment here, it's pretty inexpensive to make a bunch of rigs. Um, and the way bluefish like to bite off rigs, <laughs> from me anyway, uh, it makes sense for me to make my own. Okay, so I'm going to start. I've got, show you what I've got. I've got some American fishing wire. This is uh, number five. It's pretty light, which is fine for bluefish. You can get this up to like number 15, which is great for like when I'm fishing for bigger, heavier fish like sharks. I use that, but this is fine for bluefish. So we got ourselves some American fishing wire. We got some, just pick these up, circle hooks. Uh, they're a one aught circle hook. That's a good size. Anything between a one and a one aught is fine. You don't need anything bigger than that. You can catch blues, you can catch red drum, black drum on this size hook. It's actually fine. Whiting even. Uh, you can catch on this hook. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's a good size. I got some barrel swivels here. I got myself a triangle weight. I got a four ounce for now. I'm going to adjust that depending on the weather. And I got a couple of beads and some mono line because I usually do a mono leader um, because I have braid on my rod. Okay, to start with, I cut myself off a piece of American fishing wire. This is about a foot, maybe a foot and a half of wire. And I'm going to put my first hook on. So I'm going to take my hook. Now I'm left handed so you might do this backwards. I might do it backwards. Um, and I hold my wire in my left hand and I take the hook and I face it away from the wire. So it's, you know, it's kind of, even though it's a circle hook, pretend it's facing that way. And I'm going to come with the wire and I'm going to go in the eye in the back here. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do, because it's on the top there, the top, I'm going to lay the wire down onto that hook just so it's parallel with it, just like that. I'm going to hold it down with my finger. Now I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to wrap it around that hook. A couple times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good. Nice and tight next to each other. Then I take the wire and I go back in the eye of the hook. And when I pull that, oops, let's see if we can do it right. Come on, we're on national TV here. <laughs> I pull that wire. I almost lost it again. I did. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. I can do this, folks. I'm a trained professional. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. I pull that. Try to make sure it doesn't kink, which is why I was kind of messing up there. I'm just going to push it down and I can get my nail caught on the thing there. And then that's going to get pressed down. We're going to tighten that up a little bit. But that's basically the idea there. Now I might come back and trim a little of that. That's fine, though. So that's my first hook on the wire. So I want to have the second hook about the same, um, about a distance of a, of a finger mullet, which is about the length of my hand. So I'll usually I'll just take kind of like the length of my hand and I go to put my next hook on. And I do the exact same thing. I'm coming in with my wire, the opposite side this time, but the hook is facing the same direction. So I'm gonna get it in the eye there. So, it's like, so my dog's barking. Right, and about a hand's width apart, maybe a little bit more, a little less, depending how you like it. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to lay that wire down on that hook. So it's just laying down there like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And back in the eye. And this time I'm going to do it right. There we go. And I'm going to pull that down. And that is going to be my rig, basically. That's it. Um, now, like I said, I'm going to put I'm going to put the hook fish on. I'll put the nose through there, and then let's go in the back or the belly, depending on which way I do it. And that's ready to go. So the only thing I have left to do is on this side, I'm going to take a barrel swivel, and I'm going to put it onto the wire. And I'm going to use a hay wire twist. So what I do is I like to bend it up and make a V, like that kind of an idea, the V, and then I twist them around each other. And I'll do that a couple times, keeping that V. So I get this really nice kind of twist to it. Hope you can see that on the camera. If not, trust me, I'm doing a great job. Move stuff out of the way a little bit there. So I'm kind of making a noise. Okay. Once I've got a couple of twists like that, I'm kind of going to straighten this wire out, and I'm going to go around a barrel, uh, just a barrel roll, really. Um, try to do it tight. Sort of the same kind of thing I was doing with that uh, with the hook. Where I'm just wrapping it around, and I'll probably just keep going until I get to the end here, or I'll probably just take that tag off. But now you can see the, the rig itself is done here. We'll cut that tag off, we'll break this tag off, I said, but there it is, you got that to that. So that's basically the rig.
So I put away the shrimp, I caught a couple of more finger mullet, and I went for one more fish before we had to leave the island, and I finally got the fish I was looking for <laughs> for this video, which was the blue fish. He took that um, finger mullet, and I got him right on the line. A nice size one, too. There was a lot of them out there, but if I had stayed another hour, I could have caught, I could have caught a few more um, nice size bluefish right there. So get out there, try a bluefish rig. Um, try some shrimp if you want pompano and just if you have a cast net get some of those finger mullet and you're not going to have any trouble catching fish between now and November I guarantee it if you're on Shackleford Banks or if you're here on Oak Island so get out there let's go fishing all right